Hello, this is Paul Stalter from Central Ohio Heaters. We're glad for your interest today in our tutorial video of a 235 resin or waste oil furnace. We're going to show you about six things. The first thing is the electrical symbols on the wiring diagram. The second thing, the component list. The third, sequence of operation. The fourth, the operational video. Number five, practical installation guidelines. Six, cleaning and periodic maintenance. Come on, let's go. The first thing here, this is the main control box. Inside, there will be a wiring diagram picture schematic on the top here. It's important that you understand these symbols. If you'll notice, there's a, a triangle with no letter on top. That's the terminal strip in here in the main control box. There's a triangle with a P on top. That's the connection in the pump enclosure. That's this, on the waste oil tank. A triangle with an H on top is this here in the oil heater compartment on the burner. There's some connections in here. It's all in the wiring diagram in the book that you will get from Central Ohio Heaters when you buy a furnace. The square here is the burner junction box right here on top of the furnace. Once you understand these symbols, the wiring diagram makes a lot of sense. These are connections to run the different components on the burner. Okay, the second is the component list. The components are the main control disconnect power switch. This turns the power to the entire unit on and off. A lot of them have an indicator light there to tell you if the power is on. Be sure to turn your power off in the summertime so you don't cook the oil in the preheater. This will carbonize the oil and make difficulties running the unit. Next is the fan limit junction box. There's electrical wire twisters inside of here. Some connections go to the blower motor and some connections also go up inside of here inside the chamber area runs to the fan limit control. This switch here turns the fan on when the unit gets warm it blows air out in the shop to make you nice and warm. These two switches here are hooked in series. The first one shuts down if the unit overheats and starts back up when it cools down. The second one here shuts down in the event of a major overheat. It melts out this switch here and it will never restart until you replace this panel here. If this switch melts out, be sure you replace the entire panel because there could be something wrong with this switch that it did not shut down. This is a meltdown safety switch. Next we're going to show you the five preheater switches. Three of them are on the preheater barrel. That's the oil preheater. It heats the oil up that comes to the burner cold. has a heater element inside of it. Down inside here. comes way down inside there. This switch here runs the, the blue wire to run the heater to keep it warm all day long. That's the thermostat switch. This switch here is the cold temperature shutdown. This switch here is the overheat switch. If this unit overheats, it shuts the entire unit down here. This is the retention head as seen on the front of the burner. This is when it's fully assembled. You see the nozzle in the center, the electrodes, and the retention head. Notice the difference in size. This in here is off of a bigger furnace. The 235 has an inch and a half hole in the center here. The bigger furnaces have inch and three quarter hole. So be sure you get the right retention head if you ever change that part out. This here is the oil preheater. Oil goes around there. There's an O-ring at the back here to seal it off. That thing comes apart. It's right inside of here. If you ever need parts for that, they're all available.
Next we're going to show you the air compressor. That's this right here. And the air compressor has an orifice on it. This orifice normally screws in here. We have a gauge in the air, teed in, into the air line here so you can see the pressure when it's running. You'll notice it runs about 12 pounds of pressure. When you get a unit, it will just have this screwed in here. This is only for test purposes, for demonstration, and for the video. The other thing about the air compressor system is the low air switch. The low air switch sits right inside of here, and this runs over to the compressor. This sends power over to this oil solenoid here, which opens when you have air pressure to let oil into the flame. Next is the burner combustion air blower motor. This blows air at the fire. Next is this here. This is a post purge relay. It runs the burner motor here. When the, the whole time the flame's running, once the unit gets hot, the fan motor in the back gets its power from the fan limit switch clicks this relay and after purges the burner motor to keep the unit blowed out and cooled down. Next we have the transformer. Makes 14, 000, 10 or 14,000 volts here. Puts it on the electrical tabs and goes up to the electrical electrodes. The retention head and nozzle is also up in there. The electrical heaters are in here. Next we have the electric eye. This normally watches the flame up in here all the time. If you run out of oil, the flame up in here will get dim. You will lose the ohms coming back through this electrical cord to the flame controller and it pops the red button. It shuts the unit down. Now this black carlin control here is electronic control. It will retry in 90 seconds and it will probably not see a flame so it will shut it down permanently until you reset this button. You hold that five seconds and let go and it's ready to start again. Or the other thing is if you get dirt in the eye here, it will think it doesn't see a fire and so it will shut the flame down. That will shut it down also. Next we have the coarse and fine air band. This is the fine air band, has the big long finger on it. This finger right here, that's the fine band. And this one here that has the big egg-shaped holes in it, eight big egg-shaped holes, that's the coarse band. For a 235, you're going to want this about 3 16 of an op inch open. This arrow here should point to number one or number two. There's numbers on the side of the burner right here. Uh, that arrow points to the right number there. There will be specs, a spec sheet you get with the furnace when you buy from Central Ohio Heaters. That adjusts the combustion air. Next we have the peep door right here. And on the peep door is an overheat switch. This is for a plug furnace or a plug stack. In the event that things get plugged up and get hot and the, the exhaust backs up that it can't get out of the furnace because it's plugged up, this button will pop and shut the furnace down. There's a safety stop light on top of the uh, flame controller that this switch here shuts down. This opens up to see the flame. Next we have the clean out door. This is the back of the furnace. Of course we have a sheet metal panel that goes on this end of the furnace. We have the, the heavy duty clean out panel off. There's a ring of bolts around here. This is where this panel here goes up on here and it has an insulated board here to protect the door. You wouldn't believe this. We have, we've got furnaces in that was level full of ash. This whole thing here is full of ash. Obviously the furnace can't breathe. And the heat can't get out of the furnace. It's very hard on waste oil furnaces, so you do want to be sure to clean your waste oil furnace out. The fan motor is on the back of the furnace. This furnace here has a ductable unit. If you have ductable uh, heat ducts going down through the shop, you will need a ductable fan motor to blow air at the fire 
or to blow air out in your shop. This will blow it down through ductworks. If you if you don't have duct, if you just want to blow it out in the shop, this propeller fan motor is all you need. This is the normal way they do it here on most waste oil furnaces. This is non-ductable. Uh, the meter pump drive motor. This is the meter pump. Inside of it is a drive motor. We have these motors, replacement motors available. You got ball bearings in there. It's a very good motor. On the end of the thing is a 72 A2RE 7710 waste oil pump. It's a very good pump. You have your suction filter with a vacuum gauge to tell if it's plugged up. We have meter pump parts available. The barometric damper is over here. This is on your exhaust system. Now, keep in mind, this thing here should be out here three feet. It's too close to the furnace. This here will not operate as smooth as what it should because this is too close to the furnace. It should be out a little, while, a little further. And then you elbow and go straight up. Now, next we're going to talk about the sequence of operation. First, your power comes in the preheater or it, it comes to the whole unit in the disconnect switch. It goes through these overheat switches. If the furnace is not overheated then the burner gets power <coughs> to run the flame. It gets power to preheat the heater element here in the oil preheater. There's switches on there. There's also switches in the nozzle. First of all, it comes to this blue switch, or no, it comes to the yellow, yellow switch, switch first. If it's not overheated, then the power comes to the blue switch and runs the heater element all day long, keeps it warm, keeps this whole thing nice and warm. This switch here also gets power, but does not send it out until this unit gets warm, and then it will start the flame. It also runs to this, these two switches here. This is all in your book in the wiring diagram. This red wire switch here, this runs heater, runs power to the electrical heaters inside the nozzle here and inside the elbow. There's two electric heaters, just small heaters, 30 watt heaters. Keeps the nozzle warm. And the black wire switch here, this one here, keeps the flame from firing until the nozzle is warmed up. It takes about seven minutes for the system to warm up. You'll think nothing's happening, but in seven minutes you'll get a green light up on the furnace right here. That's the limit OK status light and then it also gets power to the flame controller. Once you turn your thermostat up, it closes the TNT circuit on the flame controller and then it sends power to the meter pump, to the transformer, to the combustion air blower, on the burner to the air compressor and that closes the air proof switch at approximately 8 psi and sends power to the oil solenoid to energize the electromagnet so now you have hot oil, air, spark, compressed air for proper atomization. The flame will run two to five minutes possibly one to four something like that then when the heater gets warm the fan switch in the back of the unit, clicks and starts the fan motor, blows air through the unit from the back blower on the back of the unit, and runs all day long or until the thermostat is satisfied and your shop is warm. However, if there's any kind of malfunction, it will safely shut the flame off. The fourth thing is an operational video. We want to show you the furnace running here now. Stay right there. Turn on. Turn on. Turn on. Notice the air pressure here. We have about 12 pounds of pressure. Here's the orifice. If you disconnect this orifice here, you lose air pressure and you'll lose the flame immediately.
here's the electrode. See, you can, you can. You don't want to try this. This is rather dangerous. You'll knock you off the ladder. See how it starts sparking there at about five eighths of an inch. If it, if you have to get closer than five eighths of an inch to make it spark, transformer's no good. Now, don't you try that. That's dangerous. You only want to. You don't want to try that if you have, unless you have experience doing that. Do not try that. Let's also show you the uh, the stack. See how clean it burns. Okay. Notice how clean this burns. This unit's running right now. You can't see a bit of smoke coming out. It burns beautiful. Okay, next we want to talk about practical installation guidelines. Uh, first of all, you want to do everything it says in the book and obey all electrical and fire codes, both national and local codes and all UL codes for stack, electrical, and clearances. We normally put three foot above the furnace for fire protection above, three foot on the end of the furnace for cleaning purposes, plenty of room on the front, front for the hot air to blow out, room on the back to suck, suck cold air in, room on this end to service anything you need to service, three foot in all directions. It also needs to be eight foot off the floor. Be sure you use heavy electrical wire, heavy enough to feed the furnace. Look at your ratings on the furnace in the book. Uh, you probably need 12 or, 14, 12 or 10 gauge wire. Don't use 14 gauge wire. Uh, especially on the ductible models, they pull more amperage, so be sure you use a heavy enough wire. Another thing, do not mount your furnace in the center driveway of a shop. Sometimes people back their semi-trailers into the shop, and they back right into the furnace on the ceiling, running, knock it smack off the ceiling while it's running. It's not pretty. Don't laugh. It has happened. Fasten it on a solid shelf or from the ceiling, somehow where it's safe. Cut the insulation black back from the stack plenty so you don't have a stack fire. Where the insulation, especially with urethane insulation, cut it back six inches. Uh, in the attic, keep the insulation back. Put a aluminum guard around the insulation stack in the attic to keep the insulation back. The meter pump needs to have a, suck, uh, a leak proof suction line. We recommend a flare copper suction line. Goes off of the meter pump, down the tank, cut it off 10 inches off of the bottom. This is a spin on filter with a suction gauge to tell if it's plugged up. This is a stainless steel mesh screen. This is not a paper element. The part numbers on here, CP752-100M. That's a very good filter. We also have another option. Uh, it's a cleanable filter with a suction gauge. Inside of the filter is going to have this cleanable uh, mesh stainless steel filter. You can clean that with a pressure washer. On the outlet side here, it comes out of this end of the T, goes up to the furnace goes right in there on the furnace shelf. It is important that your line comes uphill all the way up to the furnace. Don't bring it up against the ceiling and back down because air will not bleed downhill. That's very important that your line goes uphill all the way from the meter pump up to the furnace. Never go up against the ceiling and run downhill. That will not bleed the air out. Be sure to check all your local and national codes which may vary from this before you hook your furnace up. This here is a pop-off valve in the event that you get some rubber or brass or carbon or dirt in the nozzle that can't push through. This valve will hold the pressure to get to, until it gets up to about 50 pounds 
and then it pops off and goes back to the tank. Just a high pressure relief. Next, let's talk about cleaning and periodic maintenance. This, uh, this panel comes off the end of the furnace, and this is where you clean the furnace out. The resin 235 needs to be cleaned every 250 hours. We have a nice cleaning tool available. It fits the, the sides of the chamber. It scrapes the chamber. And it also on the other end, it has a clean out thing that goes in, in the flat tube, cleans the tubes out, both sides of the tubes, you can clean it out. People have neglected the cleaning of their furnaces and we've got furnaces in that was clear full up to here. Obviously the furnace can't breathe if it's like that. This is what the ash in your furnace should look like. It's baby, basically like baby powder or lime. It's, it's very soft and clean. It should be white to tan. Clean the furnace out every 250 hours. We also have a filter protector available. This is a really neat option. We sell a lot of these. This filter here is soft and it has a fine material on the outside of your standard shop vac filter. When you vacuum all that ash up in the furnace, it eventually will plug up this here fine material. When that plugs up, you won't, your vacuum won't work anymore. All you got to do is shut it off. This thing expands, the ash material drops off of the fine material and you're ready to go again. It's nice and clean. Them things work wonderful. We have a lot of those out and we use them ourselves here in the shop. Weekly, check the flame appearance. Over here, open this up and check the flame every week to make sure everything's working good. Yearly, check the, the electrodes here, make sure the electrodes aren't burnt off, make sure this thing here isn't crusted over with garbage. This here should be a sixteenth of an inch through the center of the retention head. The nozzle should stick through a sixteenth to a zero to a sixteenth. It should stick through the retention head there. You put a razor blade across the end there. It needs to be through a little bit. That's very critical in the, the way the flame runs. At the end of the season, be sure you turn your unit off. Let it cool down. Turn the power off. Clean the stack and the elbows outside, the rain cap, clean out the chamber and wait till next year. If you're interested in a 235 Resner waste oil furnace, please give us, uh, take a look at our website, centralohioheaters.com. Visit our website. We have lots of pictures to click on for great detail, great prices on heaters and components, burners, chambers. We have lots of technical help. Click on our technical help page on our website. Come on over to centralohioheaters.com. Thanks for watching. Again, that's centralohioheaters.com. What can we help you with? Come back on over to Central Ohio Heaters.